And turn in your Bible to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. You can, it's kind of one of the things about YouTube, you know, you can I kind of spoil the surprise here a little bit, so to speak, because uh, you can see the title of this you know, sermon before it actually even comes out. Uh, and that is, Beware of Nice Christians. You say, what are you talking about? Um, well, the word nice is not a King James Bible word. Okay, you say yes, but okay, nice isn't in there, but we're supposed to be kind to people and whatever else, right? Let's look about that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. See? So, Brian, you're wrong. You are just way too militant. What's with all the name calling? You need to stop your name calling, Brian. You need to be more kind and loving and nice. And you need to smile all the time. Because if you don't smile, then you can't really show the Spirit of God. And, and lost people should want to be part of us because we're so loving and so kind and friendly like Barney the Dinosaur. Oh, oh there was that sarcasm again. You know, oh. Who's this written to? Verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. He's writing to save people, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. It's talking about saved brethren. And I've seen this thing of these uh, nice Christians, and they'll come along and they'll read passages like this, and they'll say, I just want to be nice to people, and I want to show the love of Christ, and I don't want to be judgmental or, or mean or harsh or anything to anybody. Uh, that's not New Testament Christianity. Um, nice people are not going to have the law coming after them and putting them in prison. And the Lord busts them out of prison, <laughs> you know, and then they're going out on the street and they're, you know, and the, and the rulers are saying, we're commanding you, you don't go out there. You don't preach about this Jesus anymore. Sticking them in jail, whipping them, flogging them. You don't do that to nice people. You do that to enemies. And then, uh, they go out and they're back there preaching again on the street after breaking out of jail, after the Lord breaks them out of jail. And they, they take them again before the law. And the law says, didn't we tell you to not do this? You know, paraphrasing here. And Peter's saying, you know, we ought to obey God rather than men. We're not going to listen to you. Fast forward that to today. Hey, they passed hate crime laws in California. You're not allowed to have the Bible anymore. The Bible's hate literature now. Oh, you have a Bible? You have a Bible? Oh, okay. Um, you're a Bible-believing Christian? Okay, well, you're going to prison. You get in there, the Lord goes, breaks the doors open, and you come back out again, and you say, okay, uh, as I was saying yesterday, the Bible says that there is only one way to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. And the, the authorities come, and they say, first of all, how'd you get out of jail? Secondly, we told you that you're not allowed to do this. I'm going to obey God rather than men. Get out of the way. How many people that call themselves Christians today would look at that and say, no, those people are saved? They'd say, oh, I don't identify with that. That's, that's bad. That's terrible. There's laws. They, they should be submissive to the laws, and they shouldn't, they shouldn't go out there and say those things. They, that's very harsh and very critical. And I'll grant you, there's the wicked people out there that try to make us look bad. The new IFB satanic cult and like the Fred Phelps Westboro Baptist whole thing that are out there saying God hates fags and stuff like this. You know, that's the other way. That's the other extreme. You have the ultra nice, lovey, you know, teddy bear professing Christians. And then you got the totally wicked, hateful jerks out there. You know, the street preaching movement and whatever. A lot of the people in the street preaching movement. There are ways to street preach correctly, by the way. But you have the two extremes. We're not supposed to be either one. Let me show you. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, beginning in verse 24. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient. That's how it begins. Okay? We should, you know, we're not supposed to be nice. It's not what the Bible says, but we're supposed to be gentle. You start out gentle with people. Remember that you yourself were a sinner in the past. Have a little bit of grace for people. You see some you know, sodomite or whatever else, and you, you, you don't go over there and say, you wicked, disgusting, per sex pervert, you, you filthy, you just... No, 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 no. They're a sinner. They have a soul. They're going to go to heaven or hell when they die. 
depending on if the blood of Jesus Christ washes away those sins, depending on how they come to the Lord. They come to the Lord in a broken state and say, I'm sick and tired of this life. God, please save me. I don't want to live like this anymore. God will save them. Okay? We're to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Remember, they're in the snare of the devil. They are opposing themselves with their wicked, sinful lifestyle. Yes, there is supposed to be gentleness there. There is supposed to be meekness and humility. We're not supposed to be arrogant jerks. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you should just be total, just mean-spirited, just trying to get people angry and whatever else. Um, I'm not saying that. But uh, to just be a wishy-washy little, uh, you know, uh, we'll get into it here in a little bit, but uh, just, just to not take any stands and whatever else, uh, we're not supposed to be that as Christians. Next, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, actually the same chapter, just in the beginning. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also, yeah, we're supposed to have communication. We're not just supposed to just, I'm going to learn the scriptures. I don't care what anybody else said. You're supposed to have things committed unto faithful men so that they can teach others also. Verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. A soldier? That's what we're supposed to be as Christians. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You say, wait a second here. I thought we were supposed to have gentleness and meekness and be humble and whatever else. Uh, how can you do that as a soldier? Soldiers kill. Okay? <laughs> uh, you say, well, soldiers are trained to kill. Now, I don't mean that we're, you know, we're soldiers of Allah or something like this, you know, the false moon god of, of Islam. I'm not talking about that. Uh, we go out and we convert with the sword, the physical sword. Uh, no, our, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? This is our spiritual weapon right here. Um, but we're supposed to go out as soldiers. Okay. Now, if you learn anything about the military or police or whatever else, uh, they have escalation of force. Right. In other words, you, especially with police, not so much military because they're, they're there, they're, you know, you should come into a, a, a town and whatever else and try to make friends with the people first. And if they reject, then, okay, um, then problems start. But uh, with the police, we'll just use the police as an example. A uh, police officer is called to the scene of a crime. He should come there wanting to bring peace. He's an officer of the peace, you see. And he gets there and some guy's out there and he's, he's all angry and he's, he's mad and he's, you know, whatever. The police officer has to be careful, but he has to come over there and, hey, buddy, what's going on? All right, just, uh, could you please sit down? All right, let's, let's get, talk this thing out. If the guy's really aggressive and whatever else, he might have to say, okay, hands on your head, you know, get, it, get his hand back here ready with his, his gun or taser or whatever else. He's going to have to be there and, and see, do I need to escalate this thing to different levels? You see? Different levels of force, in other words. Uh, his goal is to be gentle, to be meek. He doesn't know what the guy's going through. He doesn't understand what the situation is. Hey, explain your side of the story. These people called me on you, um, but I want you to explain to me what you're doing and what, what's going on here. He wants to come in in a gentle manner. We're supposed to do the same thing as Christians. You might get somebody that's lost and very, very, they're using a lot of profanity and they're, they're really angry and whatever else. But you don't know what they went through. You might be dealing with a Roman Catholic that was molested as a child and doesn't trust anybody under the name of Christian. How are we supposed to know? Come in gentle. They're mocking the Bible. They're, they're belittling Jesus Christ and, and saying nasty, horrible, perverted things a lot of times. Come in gentle. Come in meekness first. But you might have to escalate that. 
And if they just keep on mocking the Bible and, and laughing at you and making fun of you, then just say, hey, you know what? You're wicked. You're evil. You have to slay them with the sword of the Spirit. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to, you know, that Jesus Christ is Lord. All right? You might have to do that. You might have to come in and, and attack them and hit them hard. But start out gentle. Start out meek. But the danger here is when you see these Christians and there is somebody that's wicked and evil and a terrible person and they're just, I just want to be nice and I don't want to judge and whatever else. I mean, you know, a police officer gets called to the scene of a crime and he pulls in and there's some guy and he's out in the front yard just punching his wife in the face, you know, domestic dispute. And the police officer comes, comes over and says, um, you know, uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, could you please stop? I'm here to talk to you. You know, <laughs> no, you know, get off of her now. You know, you, you, you yell, you, you escalate the level of force, you see. Um... You wouldn't trust a police officer like that. Why would we trust a Christian that comes in and says, well, I don't want to judge the Catholics. I, I, I certainly think I would have some disagreements with Roman Catholicism, but, but I, I think that there are brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, re recently, a certain individual came out and said that uh, James White is a brother in Christ. And he's so nice with the way he smiles. James White's not a brother in Christ. James White is a very wicked deceiver that has turned many people against the King James Bible. He's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's a snake. Why on earth would you say he's a brother in Christ? And I get a real attitude when I hear people that call themselves Christians and they'll come out and they'll say, well, I think Billy Graham, you know, he definitely had his problems, but uh, I think he did some real good things for the Lord. He was a snake. He was a deceiver. You're in battle, the heat of battle, and shooting rounds and things, and you're fighting hard, and the enemy's fighting back, and you, and you know guys are getting shot around you and whatever else, and you see some Christian over here, and he's sitting there playing with a daisy. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. <laughs> Pick up your weapon and fight. Oh, I just don't, I don't think I could. I don't think I can fight right now. You know what the guy is? He's treasonous. You can't trust him. Oh, I'm a King James Bible believer, but I don't want to attack the Catholic Church, and I don't want to talk about Freemasonry, and I don't want to attack the New Versions, and, and I don't want to... You see? Treason! Beware of nice Christians. My dad taught me something growing up, and he said, don't ever trust anybody that fake smiles. If somebody can turn their smile on and off like that, don't ever trust them. Well, I'm here to talk to you today about some things that are very important to me. And I think that what we need to do is just make sure that you understand where I'm coming from. Because you see, if you don't, there's bad things that could happen to you. You know what I mean? Do you ever see these people? They just got such a nice smile as they're talking and their head's going and going back and forth. And, the, and it's just like a snake trying to charm you. Don't trust them. I'll pass that advice on to you, my viewer. Don't ever trust anybody that can turn their smile on and off just like that. Don't ever trust them. People need to be real. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. You see, as a Bible-believing Christian... You have to look at scriptures that say, I'm to be gentle, I'm to have meekness, I'm to be patient, long-suffering, all those things, the fruit of the Spirit, I'm supposed to have that. But then you don't ignore the scriptures that tell you that you need to fight. And you need to be offensive to the lost. You have to do both, you see. There's a time for each scenario. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. You know, one of the greatest temptations for you as a Christian, for me as a preacher, is to pretty up the gospel of Jesus Christ. To preach a gospel without repentance. To uh, not make people feel uncomfortable about the wreck that their life is. To tell people, 
Jesus died on the cross and all you got to do is just believe. Just believe. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. You see, I'm after your money. I mean, uh, I'm after you, uh, um, uh, your friendship. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. Are you get offended? Well, okay. I'm being honest with you. That's just what I am. Why? Because I want to be the servant of Jesus Christ. I don't want to please men. I'm called to be a soldier. And I have to hack people down sometimes with this book. All the thing he ever does is just expose people. That's all he ever does. Well, you know, I get that thing too, you know. Uh, in spite of the fact that most of my preaching is not exposing anybody. But I come out with exposés sometimes. A lot of times I'll let the person just go for years and years and years before I have to finally say something about it in the Bible-believing movement. And uh, finally I see enough evidence there that I'm thinking, oh, I think they're fake. And I have to come out and whatever, and then people say, Denlinger's exposing so-and-so, and that's all he ever does. You know, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know. You're going to have to get to that point, brethren, where you just want to serve the Lord, and you don't care what people think about you. Galatians chapter 4, verse 16, another key passage in Scripture. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And the answer in the context is yes. They were treating Paul like an enemy. You know, beloved brother Paul. But uh, Paul just said a few things that they didn't really care for. And you see, there were some false prophets coming along and saying, your righteousness can be by the law. And you can keep the law and you can start going around saying, you know, Yeshua and, and Yahweh and all this and start to act like you're Jewish when you're not. <laughs> you know, and do all this different stuff. And you can kind of go back under the law and you can kind of get your righteousness from that. And, and what... Mm -hmm. Get that self-righteousness back in. Self-righteousness back in. Yeah. Remember what it says over in Romans about the Jews are ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness? That's what they're doing to the Galatian believers. Keep the law, you can establish your own righteousness. Nice little system for self-righteous people. And uh, Paul had to come along and Paul didn't say, Oh, I just... I, I, I think that you're my brothers in Christ, and I think that you've you certainly mean well. It, he's offensive. Comes in there, Peter's talking back in uh, chapter two. Peter, he's withdrawing himself, and he's I'm not going to eat with the Gentiles. And the Gentiles are saying, well, "What's Peter doing? I thought we were brothers in Christ." And Paul comes in, and in front of everybody, he goes, "Peter, hey, come here. I got something to say to you." Don't tell me it was Peter. Can I talk to you, please, on this other room over here? He rebukes him before them all. Offensive. He wasn't a very nice Christian that day. Uh, sometimes that's the way you have to be. Yeah, try to be gentle. You know what? But uh, a lot of times you can't. You'll be forced into a situation where you're just going to have to rebuke somebody. And sometimes it's going to be quite heartbreaking. Sometimes you'll have somebody that you thought was a friend and whatever else, and they just turn out to be a total snake. And you have to rebuke them. And you say, oh, I, uh, but, but brother, I, I recommended their ministry for years. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had that too. I recommended certain people for years, and I find out later on that they're snakes. I have to come out and rebuke them. Romans chapter 16. You ought to know these verses pretty well. I mean, I'm going over these again. Yeah, I, I always have to remember, yes, I got the seasoned Christians that are very familiar with this ministry and very familiar with the scriptures that I go over a lot. But then I get Christians that are just brand new. They've seen a video or two, and then they, they see what's the latest video that comes out, and they, they see me preaching, and they think, oh, I've never heard this stuff before. And I get the comments, you know, what do you mean by such and such? And I'm, I got preached about that, you know, six years ago. <laughs> um, so just... Bear with me. A lot of these verses, some people might say, well, yeah, we've, you know, you go over these verses a lot. Yeah, because they're very important. All right. <laughs> Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Mark them. Name names. Okay. And I didn't name a name earlier. I said... Uh, this guy that uh, smiles a lot in his videos, and he said that James White is his brother in Christ. Who was I talking about? David Daniels of Chick Publications. 
a great grief to me. I'm not going to say the guy's lost or anything like that. I'm not going to say he's a lost man, but why on earth would you say James White is a, is a brother in Christ and I want to be kind to him and whatever else? The Bible says, be ye kind. Yeah, to Christians. doesn't say that about some lost devil that's trying to turn people away from the King James Bible. It's frustrating. You know, again, one of the big lies that's put against me is that Brian Denlinger wants to be the head of the Bible-believing movement or something. James Battelle from Ex-Catholics for Christ said that. Uh, Stephen Anderson and Brian Denlinger are vying for the top position in the Bible-believing movement. What basis did he even have for saying that? He lied. Flat-out lie. I don't want to be the head of the Bible-believing movement. That's Jesus Christ. What in the world? Flat-out lies against me. You know? I don't like to have to say that. But Brian Nellinger wants to be the head of the Bible-believing movement. He wants everybody to follow him. Not on your life. I don't want to be the head of the Bible-believing movement. I'm just a preacher. My word. Turn people to the King James Bible. Let's continue. Verse 18. Paul could have just said, you know, avoid them and just, that's it. Just drop it there. Verse 18, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Why did he have to go on to say some things that are so sarcastic? Such a terrible thing for Paul to say, you know? For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let it go, Paul. Let it go. But he doesn't. But their own belly. That's an insult. Um... There are preachers on YouTube that are trying to serve their own belly. Mm -hmm. They monetize their Christian videos. Uh, <coughs> Robert Breaker, <coughs> excuse me. Um, serving his own belly. Let's get my subscriber base up to where I'm making a huge amount of money. Again, I've, I've said it before, you know. I don't care if somebody has a secular occupation or whatever else and they monetize their videos. That's fine. I don't care about that. But you would take money from the lost world for preaching the Bible? And you don't know where that money's coming from? Uh, I don't think so. This channel has never been monetized and it never will be. Lord, as me eventually start a, a secular channel or something like that, or go back to secular work, I'm going to be taking money for that from the lost world, both saved and lost. Why? That's what you do in secular work. You know? <laughs> but these people... They make merchandise of the Bible. Why? They're serving their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they're nice. They're not militant. They are very careful not to offend and not to attack. And when they see one of their enemies, they say, Oh, my heart aches for them. Oh, I'm so concerned. Oh, I'm praying for him. And, and, uh, you know, I came out and I, I, I proved Robert Breaker's a fake and, and, you know, a lot of other brethren have as well. And he comes out and he goes, oh, I'm so worried, you know. <laughs> you just got proved to be a liar. You're a lying, stinking devil. You lied to people. Oh, I'm so concerned for you. You're, you're so, you have such a bitter spirit about you. Uh-huh. <laughs> By good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. People that don't know their Bibles. People that don't understand things. Don't understand how a deceiver comes along and, and steals from other ministries and brings it out as their own. Again, you know, back when I was a wood turner, I remember I was at an art show the one time and this other artist guy, he walks up to me and he says, Hey, he says, uh, you're, you're uh, Brian Dunley, or you do this work here? I said, yeah, I am. And he said, uh, I noticed that a lot of your signatures under, under your pieces are in marker. And I said, yeah, I said, I've, you know, trying different things and whatever else. And I said, the marker just seems to come out, you know, my business insignia and whatever else. And he said, yeah, I understand that. But he said, uh, you need to be real careful about that. He said, there's some real unscrupulous artists out there that they'll actually come and they'll, they'll buy your work and they'll take it to bigger city galleries. They'll take your name off the bottom and they'll sign their own name on it. And then they bring it out as their own work. And he said, you need to either carve your, you know, business insignia in or burn it in you know pyrography it's what it's called wood burning in other words and he said you need to do that and I started doing it after that and I said thank you I didn't I didn't know that and he said yeah he said you do some real fine work people could steal it um I thought that was just in the secular world 
Uh, no, it's actually in the spiritual as well. See, I don't mind bringing out a lot of the truth that I do online. Um, I believe the Lord has blessed it. I believe through this ministry I've been able to teach a lot of people things. But I've also seen that there's some very wicked people out there that have stolen um, not just doctrine that I preach, but doctrine that Peter Ruckman teaches and, and a lot of other Bible believers have taught. And it's now available online and the lost world can see it and they can take it and bring it out as their own and look like a Bible-believing Christian. But then when you see them trying to bring out their own stuff and study the Bible and teach the Bible from themselves, it's heretical. I've seen that thing. And you see, if you're simple, if you're newly saved, you aren't going to get that. And so you'll be deceived. You haven't done, you haven't put in all the years of study and research and everything else so that you can look at somebody and say, wait a second, they're stealing so-and-so's material or, or they're copying this or they're, it sounds like they're mixing hyper-dispensationalism with this or that or, you know, they're, you don't understand it. And so a minister like me, a preacher like myself, I have to come out and I have to mark them which calls divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. And I tell people to avoid them. And I still get it. People say, well, did you see the latest video that so-and-so brought out on you? Just quit watching them. But finally, we'll end up in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Good words and fair speeches. One of the easiest ways that false prophets deceive people. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. The Bible never condemned slavery. Just as simple as that. Say, oh, that's terrible. Okay, then you know, don't bother following the Bible. Just as simple. I mean, you know, the Bible gives definite, clear directions for how to have slaves and take care and the relationship that's supposed to be there and whatever else. You don't treat them as an animal or whatever. Um, there was wrong ways that it was done in the past and, and things, but whatever. You know, I have a whole study on that thing too. But uh, watch out for the politically correct modern slant on things, you know, causing you to doubt the Bible and causing you to be ashamed of the words of God. Verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Hmm. Hyper-dispensationalists, they'll say, well, um, it's just the Pauline epistles. And even parts of the Pauline epistles, you don't, you should even cut that out, you know, as far as being for us today. And they just mess up the book and, and mess up all kinds of things. And uh, they'll turn you away from godliness. They'll tell you how you live after your profession of faith doesn't matter. There doesn't have to be godliness in your life. Mm -hmm. And they can do it in such nice ways. You'd never suspect anything, would you? Because they're such nice people. After all, why would you say such harsh things, Brian? And, and you shouldn't be attacking Brother So-and-so because he's a really nice guy. Not much discernment there, simple one. Verse 4, he is proud. Those that say don't, you know, uh, consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He's proud. Proud of his sin knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil, surmisings. Yeah. Like a lot of what goes on on YouTube. A lot of what goes on on the internet. It's not just YouTube, on social media, whatever platform it may be. There's a lot of that stuff out there. It's quite sickening. Verse 5. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Yep. Not a very uh, nice thing to do. Withdrawing yourself from ministries that are out there. But uh, I suggest you do it. But if you know better than me, you know, you've... Uh, 
been saved for a few months or a few years or whatever else, and you, you know, man, better than a man that's been in ministry full time for over 10 years. Actually, 2007 is when I actually started, not online, but you know, in church buildings. <laughs> um, but you know better. You know better. Um, you got it figured out better than I do, and whatever else. And I'm not perfect. I'm not, you know, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? If you're genuinely saved and have the spirit of truth in you. Um, okay. Uh, Brian's not very nice. I'm going to listen to people that are more nice. Okay, go ahead. They'll deceive you. Um, just as simple as that. Uh, we need to start out being gentle and meek and humble with people, but always be willing to escalate that. Why? We're soldiers. Uh, soldiers with the greatest, most powerful weapon on this planet. This King James Bible. If people don't line up with the book, you might have to uh, get them with the book. I pray you take these things to heart. I pray you think about them. Because times are very, very, very dangerous and they're only going to get worse. So that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.